Ever since I saw Alex's movie, Hot Tension, he's somebody that I really wanted to work with. He's a director that really knows how to create great suspense for the audience and is a great storyteller. So I'd always hoped to have a chance to work with him and my dream came true when I met Craig and uh, we had a chance to work on Crawl together. I've always wanted to work with Alex. There was another project that I recently just went back and looked at because I'm trying to find the next project for the three of us to do. And I found this old email that I'd give him, you know, give him, it didn't come together for whatever reason, but I had sent him a few things in between that time. When I read this, I, um, like Sam says, with like tension and storytelling, he, he, and with a little bit of um, fun with gore, I guess you'd say, goriness, uh, I thought it was perfect for him. And I really liked the claustrophobic um, feeling of being, having this prehistoric beast um, in the ha in your violating your house almost like a home invasion with with alligators uh, that I sent it to him and um, he he called me afterwards and he says you had me at the log line I don't think people have seen this combination of this natural disaster happening happening with this specific beast done in this particular way, not in like a, um, we wanted to do it in, in this sort of naturalistic way where we as humans are invaders on their land, right? And so when the water comes up, they're displaced and they're just behaving like they normally behave. You know, Alex and, and Sam and I always talked about we don't want that one alligator with like the gash in the eye and like across the eye, like I'm coming for you. It's super grounded uh, in, in its approach, but yet it has all the fun and it, it's a popcorn movie. And, and I, I think we really want that audience enjoy, enjoyment of, of being scared and, and the ride of it. So I think it delivers both on like the groundedness and, and also the popcorn part of it. That's how I, I would separate it from other ones. My job as a producer was understanding how films are made and just being a sounding board for Alex, um, a confidant, somebody who was on his side, who we could run ideas by whenever he wanted to, which was not often. But occasionally there'd be a problem and I might make a suggestion or he might have a question about how I felt about something. But really, um, it was not about my style. It's all about Alex, his style, and me supporting him the best that I could to achieve his vision. And that's, I think, what great producers or good producers do. Cross a story of a flood, a hurricane that happens in the south of Florida. And there's a young lady who's on the Gators swim team in college. And she gets a call from her sister in New York. Dad's in trouble. He's not answering his phone. I'm worried about him. So our heroine goes down, crosses the National Guard line, because the whole place is flooding, to see what's happened to her father. He's not answering the phone. And he's right in the path of this oncoming hurricane. Well, she gets to the house, and he's not there. But his car is there, so she can't figure out what's wrong. And then she hears music coming from the cellar. She goes down there and the whole place is flooding, and she finds her father unconscious in the corner of the cellar. And basically, he's been bitten by an alligator. He went down there perhaps to fix up the basement, but it's caved in due to, due to the flood, 
and an alligator has come into the cellar. And now it's really the story of this estranged father and daughter coming together and their fight for survival over one day of this Category 5 hurricane against this alligator, a struggle to survive. Yes, alligators are like this primordial creature that hasn't uh, changed or evolved in millions of years because they're such a perfect uh, killing and eating machine. And so the movie just plays upon the idea of what if conditions were such, the flood, that they came into our homes. So it's really a good, um, interesting mix of the primal and the modern day clashing just because of this particular storm. They see very well at night, which is great because during a hurricane and our, our sun is blacked out by the hurricane and um, underwater they present the same um, sort of, uh, f uh, not fear, but um, uh, danger to humans as, as sharks and great whites. And they actually, um, on the number of attacks on humans annually, they're much higher number, there's much higher numbers of alligators at alligator attacks than, than sharks. Kaya is very um, tough. She's, I physically believe through her workouts and practicing that she's a college swimmer, professional, not professional, but um, college level swimmer. And um, she, yet she has a vulnerability that she eventually reveals to the audience through Alex's direction that makes her very endearing to the audience. So she's really the kind of hero you want to root for. She starts and she's a little um, at odds with her father, played by Barry, and through the course of the movie, they come together in a beautiful way, and they're there for each other. So it's really a nice story, and the casting of her, uh, because of those complexities in the actress, makes it really work for me. I thought it was interesting that neither Barry nor Kaya had ever done like a true horror film, which was interesting. So they talked to Alex a lot about, you know, certain blocking, where am I supposed to be looking, like things that would, and they were really eager to help us craft the most scary movie possible. And that was greatly appreciated and it shows and it worked out. And then on top of that, um, we had, I think something like four million gallons um, of water circulating amongst like six temporary tanks. Um, at any given moment uh, over our um, course of shooting. And these actors were in the water almost every day and in the mud. And um, they, they loved it. And, uh, Kaya told me that it was one of the most um, uh, satisfying work experiences she's ever had and you know she's been in you know Pirates of the Caribbean and, and three huge franchise movies called called uh, Maze Runner and uh, I you know for our I like to say our little big movie um, I found that immensely um, rewarding to hear an actor say that I would think the the the, the major challenge was the water. It really was making a, a movie that has there's because there's different layers. There's there's the the flooding of of the crawl space, right? So you have to mar have a very sort of mathematical approach and continuity approach of like where the water is when you're shooting over many many days. Um, that's just one of it, and and also the practicality of making it hospitable for the actors but not inhospitable enough so that you get a great perform an accurate performance from them um, the other thing about the water is uh, honestly the the danger of, of, of shooting it our general rule was if you don't have to be in the water stay the hell out of the water basically so we always know where everyone is but you have to get makeup people in there you have to get set dressers in there to fix things because it's always breaking the water is constantly breaking down the set and you have to refresh that every day it was it was very challenging that I, I think the the water is the most challenging part this I love the effect that horror movies have on the audience 
they really seem to have so much fun when they go to them. You know, they, they giggle, they grab each other, yeah. they're holding hands, they cover themselves with coats. They're, they're just, it's such a visceral, theatrical, entertaining experience to be in a horror film. Now there's other films that are much more emotional, much more powerful and subtle and affect you deeply, but a horror film is just like going on a roller coaster and just a raw blast. That's what I love about it. I remember reading the logline, and I remember having this kind of immediate connection, almost like when you fall in love with the story. It's like, yeah, it's so obvious, you know, Hurricane Category 5, floated place, domestic place, something that you know, and alligators. It's crazy that no one have done it before. i always been looking for um, something since The Hills of Eyes and Piranha. I was reading a lot of scripts, trying to find the right scary story, the right uh, plot to justify coming back and try to make it, to go back and explore suspense and explore that type of movie again. If you create anything, even if it's a fun experience, even if it's a fun ride, you need the audience to be part of it and never come out. I see uh, uh, filmmaking as an immersive uh, uh, art form where your goal as a director is to annihilate or like erase any distance between the viewer and the screen to be sure that whatever story you're looking at, you forget that you're looking at it and you're leaving it. Like it's all about crossing on the other side of the mirror and be with the character. And especially when you do a survival story, and especially when you do a movie that takes place over just one day, you want to be in the experience. You want to be in the ride. And as a director, your first job is to become a writer and be sure that everything in the script tracks. And what she's going to discover now is that there's not only one, and the worst is to come because the water is coming up. And the more water there is, the more uh, uh, fast and dangerous the alligator become. So to find, um, to find the right actor to play uh, uh, Dave, Dave Killer, the father, I wanted someone who was kind of, um, I wanted someone that will bring with his attitude a lot of that coach uh, dynamic. Someone who was the, 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 the father coach figure, someone who could have been tough but in the same time always uh, supportive and someone who could also play a dark place where now after the divorce, after the house was put on sale, someone who cannot find himself and doesn't really uh, um, find a reason to, to exist. Barry, um, Barry is a is a very interesting actor because he has this kind of a range of um, emotion that you see in every part that he's playing. He's someone that's very devoted. He's very uh, he has like a very strong method of acting. But here it was a different, I think, project for him because it was very personal. He has a daughter that's sixteen year old. He has a relationship with his wife, and and I mean the the whole thing was kind of echoing his own personal life and I knew it was a very emotional experience for him to, to play that part. Kaya is a, she's, she's a very, very complete mastering, of, I mean, master of skill. She's a, an amazing actress. We decided to make this movie in the least Floridian place in the world, which is Belgrade, uh, Serbia, for a very simple reason, is when you do a movie that takes place only in a Category 5 hurricane, you cannot go shoot in Florida, because you will have to erase all the sky, all the trees, to replace them by CG trees, because 
you cannot recreate that type of wind so uh, or that type of rain. So we built everything on stage there. But we discovered when <laughs> I came for the first time there that the whole city was using the alligators as a symbol. And I was... Wait, the city of Belgrade? The city of Belgrade had alligators in for their cab company, for their uh, uh, city services. And I was wondering why. And I discovered that, in fact, in Belgrade lives the oldest alligator in captivity. Uh, his name is Muya, and he arrived in Belgrade, in the Belgrade Zoo, in the mid-30s, and he was already an adult which means that he's 100, maybe more uh, years old. And he's still there. So I went to visit him, of course, and, <laughs> and take picture with Muya at the, at the Belgrade Zoo. And, you know, it's a little sad. He's missing a leg. Oh. His, uh, his companion oh. died a few years ago. Oh, that's but, sad. That's sad. But, but it was kind of a sign that, you know, we were in the right place to make this movie. You know, like... Barry was in the water all the time to stay in his character. He was staying in the water and he was uh, 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 always tracking that continuity. It's very hard to have any type of continuity in that type of movie because uh, the makeup changed, the water changed, your haircut, and, and he was really in charge of, of, of his character. The same way for Kaya. Kaya was a trooper. She, she, she stayed in the water all the time and she. We were exhausted, but we were happy to make this, uh, this movie. So we knew from the beginning that uh, most of our alligators will be the best way in, uh, in the CG uh, creatures. But they're also so present in the movie, you know, like uh, in, in Hollywood and everywhere, they used to say, less is more, less is more, less is more. And it's something that I was strongly disagreeing on when we were making this movie, is we're not talking about monsters from out of space. We're talking about creatures that everyone are aware of. Alligators, everyone have seen a crocodile and alligator in their life. Pictures, or movie, footage. So I wanted them to be scary and, and threatening, but I wanted them to be very realistic. And I wanted to show them because they exist. I didn't want to hide them and make like some kind of mystery about what is in the shadow and what's going to attack you. So I really wanted an interaction. I want to see a lot of them. So to create this interaction with the actors and the alligator that will be a CG alligators after, we had a few um, tricks. Uh, uh, we had this kind of uh, green head on a pole where a, a stunt person was attacking the actor with the, the, the green head. We had a stunt person in a full um, body uh, green suit uh, uh, crawling instead of the alligator uh, in between the pipes for the actors to see. We had um, a, a diver uh, uh, who was like an amazing thing and I'm happy we did that because it's one of the best shots who was like swimming like an alligator sideways with his fin just to create the wake in the water where we could comp after our CG alligators instead. Uh, we had like machine to create splash for the tails everywhere. But when you look at the footage, uh, the real footage, and you see the intensity and the fear and the scare and how crazy Kaya played that, that, that when she get attacked. And when you look at the reality of this you know, like stuntman dressed in a spandex, like green suit with a pole and, and that head and attacking, it's kind of very silly, but you have to play it. That's, that's the way it is. Everyone from, from all the camera, grip, special effects, our department, to the hundreds of people uh, from Serbia, from England, from France, who were in the water with us all the time will tell you it was one of the most exhausting experience but also one of the most rewarding one because we knew when we were looking at the screen that we were doing something special. I wanted and we wanted the, uh, the Yuri King to be a character and growing and growing and growing when she's driving first it's only rain when she get to the roadblock, you see that 
giant uh, depression of clouds, Eureka information in the back, and then she's really driving inside. And when she gets to the house the first time, it's where you really feel the element. You feel how dangerous it is and, and how uh, windy it is. You know, it, it was so uh, unique to have this, this wind machine inside. I mean, when you were standing on the set with the rain in the water and you see the house, you were forgetting about this blue screen and just like you were really in the middle of that apocalyptic storm. I wanted to do a, a small giant movie and, and, and I think Roll has this element of being contained, having only two characters and, and a lot of danger around, but I wanted the scope to be very big and, and to feel the, that we were into, uh, you know, like a, a, it's a great ride at the end. It's not really a normal movie, it's really a suspenseful thriller. The most uh, challenging element in making Kroll was beyond uh, all the technique, the water and, and the challenges that we had mm -hmm. making the movie, was to find that right balance between drama and survival action, and drama and fear. And we had a very strong, uh, simple, very simple uh, uh, relationship story between uh, the daughter and her father between Ellie and Dave and, and, and about what happened in the past and how they have to cope with their divorce, with the sale of the house to keep moving and for her to be able to keep swimming. But I didn't want to make the movie overly dramatic either. You know, it's still, uh, uh, for me, and overall, a great Gator movie ride where I wanted to see alligators <laughs> chasing and hunting people but to be on the side of the alligators, I, I needed other characters to, to not feel too much for them, to also have fun with the alligators. And that's how we, we create the looters, the looters that are like, goes with the Eureka. I mean, every Eureka, has, every storm has his deal of just, you know, people that take advantage to just steal and and And, and so we, we wanted to make them not funny, but enjoyable and, and kind of little ceiling that when they come to their awful deaths it will be a, a, a fun ride and the same with that cop and the backstory I mean I really feel for Wayne I really like Wayne uh, the cop who comes and and really decide to help but it was more of creating a secondary character that will help for the scary fun part of the story and to bring that balance to not make it just like a, a a dry drama about uh, you know a father and a daughter. Sam was really here and really helped me to uh, uh, consolidate the vision. He was you know the one understanding about the uh, like how much you want to see, how difficult it's going to be to to see the gators and kind of reconcile uh, a very ambitious vision that I had with a movie that someone else could have said, hey, you know what, let's do it by night in like f a few small location and, and let's do it for half of the price. To work with someone that has so much experience and knowledge help you to find the right pace. So I had the chance with Scroll to make a movie that was uh, 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 like my vision and at the end the cut that uh, you saw is pretty much my director's cut so that's why there is no uh, unrated uh, cut of the movie because all the go all the scares are in and I'm very happy and proud of that futureprevews.com go behind the scenes of movies subscribe to Future Flicks YouTube channel